Molly McCann versus Diana Belbita. Molly Meatball McCann, 13-6. She is 3-2 and two in her last five. She's coming off two straight losses, and her last loss was a, a submission armbar loss to Julia Strelenko. I think that she, I remember she was the heavy favorite in that fight too. So, yeah, she kind of sold in England last time. She's kind of fighting against Diana Belbita, 15 and 8. She is three, uh, two and three in her last five, and she's coming off that decision loss to Carolina Kulabit Wajik. And right now, Diana is actually the younger fighter here by about six years, and she's going to be obviously the slightly larger fighter as well. Fight odds right now. Molly McCann is a minus 280, and um, I believe that she was actually even a bigger favorite. Yeah, oh, actually, yeah. So she opened up at a minus 155, then bet to a minus 280, and uh, last night when I checked, she was about like a minus 300. So some dog action has been taken, but mainly people are taking the Molly Meatball McCann side. And th this might be just because, I mean, this is actually a rematch um, if you look at their records, they actually fought um, in 2019, I believe, and Molly McCann actually had like a 30-25 on all three judges' scorecards in that fight. So people might think that the you know, same thing might happen here in this fight. I'll start off with this. I mean, Molly McCann, I actually think that she's a uh, you know decent striker, aggressive striker. Likes to pressure and bully her opponents. You know, good power, good volume and output in her strikes. Likes to work in the pocket. Mainly, she's a headhunter, so could be a disadvantage because you know a lot of the new generation of kind of MMA who kind of try to attack legs, body, and the head. But she's mainly a headhunter. I think that her grappling is okay, actually. You know, she's able to work in takedowns, offensively at least, you know, able to work in takedowns as she pressures the opponents to the cage and use cage takedowns. Once she's on top, she's able to rain down ground and pound. Now, the negative of her grappling is that she has very little jiu-jitsu skills, and this leads to her having very horrible sub-submission defense. Now, Diana is an offensively technical striker, has a decent jab, pumps out high volume, she also likes to pressure forward and relies on her chin and durability, just eating shots. Her grappling, I think that she can threaten off her back. She does have a decent arm bar, but she is usually held down once taken down. And she does not have the best submission defense herself. As I mentioned, this is a rematch of the 2019 bout where Molly 30-25 Diana on all three judge scorecards. Molly was able to just dominate that matchup, and I see Molly winning again due to her edge and power and Diana's lack of submission ability, which is Molly's weakness. My pick here is Molly by decision. I could see KO, maybe, if Diana wilts under some of that pressure, but Molly by decision is my pick. I actually like the over one and a half at minus 240. It looks appealing and a potential parlay piece for me. Gerard, what do you think about Meatball versus Diana Belbita here? Yeah, for this rematch, this is going to be at a straw weight instead of a fly weight from their last fight. So I think this might be Molly McCann's first go at straw weight, and it, it'll be a rematch here. She's already beaten Diana once, but that was a younger Diana Belbita. And I think uh, Deanna's probably gotten much better than her lap than in the past. And Molly McCann is getting older and we don't really see her getting much better. So the question is if Deanna has been able to close the gap and the wild card, if Molly McCann will look good in this lower weight class. So Molly McCann's going to be at the, the dangerous fighter. She's got dangerous hands. And I, I think she'll she'll have the more damaging blows. But Belbita, she's a little bit more technical. She throws some volume, but she doesn't really show me too much threat in the danger factor in her striking. So this fight, I'm going to lean 
Molly McCann in the rematch, but I think there's upset potential here for Deanna getting the get back in Molly McCann. Molly McCann has been has shown to uh to lose as a favorite in the past. So yeah, I'm probably gonna stay away. Belbita might get some action later in the week, but I'm not sure yet. So McCann's gonna be my pick for now, but I'm probably gonna stay away. What what do you think about the over one and a half? Is it too good to be true? Because you usually don't see that in a women's MMA belt. Uh over one and a half. Yeah. Well, what is the odds for that? Minus two forty. Minus two forty. Uh, over one. Seems somewhat trappy. I don't know. Maybe it's a trap. <laughs> maybe, maybe they see a Belbita sub early or a yes. Molly McCann KO early or something. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it does seem too good to be true because usually you don't see those odds for when it's MMA. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. but we'll see. I mean, it opened up at minus 210 and it's been bet to minus 240. So DGENs are already trying to pound that uh, right off the <laughs> yeah. bat. So, I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to include that in my parlays, honestly. I feel like it is uh, mm-hmm. too good to be true. But hey, sometimes you just got to play the odds, play the system. 